Okay, so first, uh, welcome everyone to join today's global public training. And uh, maybe this is the last uh, time public training of SMB partner of this year. Of course, next year, we also have a lot of time to share the training information to you. And uh, about this training, uh, the topic is about the Rage Cloud the new feature of auto configuration and BYOD solution. So that's why at the beginning, I ask everyone, do you download, install, and register the Rage Cloud or not? If you already have the account, please write one to let me know it. Okay. Only two guys. Okay, if you not download now, we still have time place to find the app store and uh, search the Rage Cloud and uh, download it and register an account because later we will do some practice together with the Rage app. And also we will check some information on the Rage Cloud website. So please download and install it. And uh, at the beginning, let's have a brief introduction about myself and about this course. My name is Emily and I'm the trainer of the Radio Training Center. And uh, I will have lots of trainings focus on uh, lots of products like the wireless, router, switching and the security and so on. And the more than six years focus on the training. And about this course, we will have nearly three hours to talk about the Rage Cloud feature. And uh, the first part is the auto config. Because in our network, if you want to deploy some network projects, the basic one is have a connection network, right? You have to make the network connection is ready. Then you can add some special, uh, special application service. The second one, we will explain something about the BYOD solution. And the last part, if you do the network project, you have some problem, you want to get some help, we also have lots of service and support you can find. So totally three hours, we will have three parts. So in this process, I will ask some questions with you together. If you know the answer, or maybe you have any questions, please write down on the chat window. I will focus on the window and explain something. Okay, so on this training, I only have this requirement. If you have any suggestion or maybe some answer, please feed me back so we can discuss together. And before we start the detail, information i have one question for you okay please see if you are an employee or maybe you as a customer what's the network service do you usually use the, in your company that may in the office scenario what network service you usually will use if you know, please write down on the chat window and I want to get something from your site. On the office scenario, do you use any network service? For my part, because I am the employee of a radio company, when we go to the office and uh, the first part, I want to use my computer to connect with the cable and then to wait the internet. So this is a basic service. So something like this, do you have any service you really use the, in your company? User management, yes. Well, maybe we want to divide a different department and maybe we want to do some control, right? Someone can wait, uh, yeah, VLAN, of course. Any else? No more service? I think maybe if we have all, if we have work on our company, we have lots of network service. QS, yes. VPN, good. Anything else? If you only the customer or maybe the employee, 
Yes, yeah, a web filtering. Good. Anything else? Then with management. Whoa. Whoa, yes, yes. Speed limit. Oh, I, I guess you already know what I want to talk about to you about today's training topic. The word is so good and so same with my topic. Yes, load balance. Yes, I can see lots of service. Maybe when you're in the office and uh, you want to do some network control and some VPN, fail over. Yes, yes. So many applications. Yes. And uh, the second question is, if you are a network administrator, how do you configure the network to meet these requirements? Because now today you join the training, maybe you are an engineer, right? And uh, maybe your customer or maybe in your company, someone say, I want to control the user. I want to apply some VLANs. And uh, maybe someone say, I want to apply the QS to distinguish different priority application and provide different uh, service, something like this. So if you are the network administrator, how do you use the configuration to meet all the requirements? This is a basic one, right? If you are the customer, it's very easy. I need the first one, second one, third one. But if you are the administrator, you have to do some configuration. You also have to buy some network devices and then to add the configuration to meet the requirement. So today our topic is solve the second problem, how to help us to do some network service easily and uh, how to do, how to maintain the network service easily. Do the project is the first uh, step, right? We want to add the command or maybe to use some ready device to do the configuration, then we can wait the internet, or maybe we can uh, finish the VPN, or maybe we can manage some users. The second one, we hope that we also can have a good tool to maintain the network easy. For example, if we already deploy the VLAN, but the network cannot provide the connection. So how to solve the problem? How to help us test the problem? or how many uh, radio service can provide, can provide us to do the troubleshooting as soon as possible. So this is a basic requirement we also want. And uh, this training, we will talk how to use the radio cloud app, the auto configuration and the BYOD to meet the requirement easily. Okay, so Next, uh, these are three topics we will talk later one by one. The first part is auto configuration. So we can do the summarize of the typical network service. In this scenario, we will focus on the office scenario, maybe different scenario like the school or maybe the other finance, the service maybe is different. But here are four typical network service in the office scenario. The first one is network isolation. That's why I see so many people already write down the answer. We want to use a VLAN to finish the network isolation. And uh, I have the question why VLAN can do it and how to do the configuration by using the VLAN to finish the network isolation. This is the first one and the basic requirement. And the second one is a security authentication. Someone maybe say, when we uh, go to the office, if some guest enters the company, we want to provide some authentication. You have to enter some password or maybe virtual code, something like this. And then we can limit which segment you can visit. So all of them based on the security authentication. Of course, how to protect our network. We also have lots of technologies. The third part, we want to control some user and app, maybe block some app. In the working time, maybe you only can visit the internal uh, resources. You cannot visit outside the website, something like this. And we also want to limit some speed. This is a third type. And the first type is a VPN for the branches and the remote work. Maybe today I do the training 
and uh, I have the work on my home, but I still want to wait some resources of my uh, company. So one solution is we can use a VPN. Of course, we also have the other solutions. So there are four typical network service to meet our requirement. And then let's say, if not, I already give you an example. This is your network topology. For example, we will have six APs and uh, this APs can provide the network connection of our wireless network. And uh, we also have several uh, switchers and uh, the first layer maybe is uh, this layer maybe is the access switch. And about this access switch, usually we, uh, we will directly connect with our AP and also we will connect with uh, our terminals, maybe some uh, personal computer, something like this. And the last one, maybe in your office, you also have lots of the CCTV or maybe IPTV, something like this. They also have to connect with our switch. Then we can connect with the upper switch. And about this upper switch, we will use the NBS 3200, and this performance is higher than the access switch. Then we will connect with our router to wait the internet. This is a very typical application in our network topology. Maybe in the office, uh, your office, your company is bigger, the topology will be complex. Or maybe in some smaller company, the topology will be easy, but this is a typical topology. So if now I already show you, you already buy the device and you already use the cable to connect with each other and all the device gets the power ready, then how to meet the requirement of the four typical network service. So this is a key point we want to know. And about the network planning and the requirement is this one. We will have a world network and the name is Staff World. And we hope the VLAN is VLAN 10. And another one is a Staff Wireless Network. And this is SSID. And we hope the authentication is open. That means you don't need to enter any password. You can direct it to connect with it. And the VLAN is 20. But when we log in, we provide the authentication. And the authentication way is account portal. This is a second requirement. And the third one is a guest Wi-Fi. If some guests visit our company, we also provide the SSID. The name is guest. And we want to provide the encryption and show us some password. And the VLAN is 30. And also provide the authentication but we will choose the type is voucher. So according to this topology, how to meet the requirement, we also will uh, give some network planning, right? If we deploy this one, we can meet the basic requirement. So this is uh, the network planning. And uh, about the origin solution, if you want to do at uh, this command on the network devices, then you will find, I show you a basic, a basic planning of all the devices. For example, if you want to meet the basic network connection, the first part is a VLAN, right? You will have to use the VLAN to divide the different uh, departments or maybe different uh, service. For example, VLAN 10 for the staff to wait as a world network. But about the VLAN 20, we were used for the staff wireless network. And the VLAN 30, we were used for the guest. If you want to finish all the VLAN information, you will find we have to create the VLAN and uh, create some special interface. How many devices we have to do the application? We have to apply the distribute switch and all the access switch. And also about the AP, if you provide some wireless, uh, wireless information, you also have to create the VLAN on the AP. And if you don't have the cloud, you have to do this VLAN, create 20, create 30, create 10, and to all the devices one by one.
to click and uh, down to click and uh, save. So the configuration is very complex, right? Not very difficult, it's very complex because maybe you have lots of devices. And another one for the IP address also is a basic requirement. You every devices must have IP address, then they can do the encapsulation and then they can wait the internet. So how to assign the IP address for terminal for network devices? We can have two types, one manually configure one by one. This way we call it static. And another one, we will choose the dynamic assign IP address. We will use the DHCP. And later I also will explain what means DHCP and how to, and what's the key point if you want to use the DHCP in your network. So if you choose the DHCP, you have to create multiple pool and to let all the terminal know this information. If you want to get the IP address, what's the segment you can get IP address? For example, about the staff world pool, the segment is 192.168.10.0. And another one will list is 20.0, and the third one is 30.0. So if you use your EG router as the DHCP server, you have to create multiple pool on the EG one by one. Okay, click one by one. So about this command also is very, very complex. Maybe if you use a ring e device or maybe some ring EG, it's, it's easy because you don't need to remember the command. We will provide the GUI page. So you only to click and to enter the parameters is enough, but you still have to create multiple pool. And later I will show you if you use a ring app, how easy to finish this process. The third one is SSID. When you open the wireless, the Wi-Fi, then you can get so many SSID name. That's because you already added the conf configuration on your device. Then the RF interface will send out the name. Your phone can search it and connect them and then to do some next step. So this is a basic part about the SSID. When you create the SSID, you also can set the uh, encryption to become open or maybe some other algorithm, uh, so, sorry, some other algorithm like, like the WP, uh, WEP or WEP2, something like this. And about your wireless network, you also can do some bandwidth limitation. So whole SSID, we can limit the bandwidth to become 10 Mbps, something like this. Of course, if you want to limit the personal account or maybe some user group, you also can do another limitation. But how many APs you have? How many SSID you have to create? So if you have four APs, you have to do the configuration on four APs. If you have six, you have to add the SSID on six devices. And how to meet the security authentication? we have to add the capital portal authentication. And because we have two wireless, one is for staff and another one for guests. And we also can provide the account or maybe the voucher. Of course, here are some typical why the guest will use a voucher because every time the guest maybe is different. But about the staff, uh, I think, uh, within the, the lots of time, all the staff will be same. So they can use a fixed account to visit our internet. And then if you want to do the configuration to meet the capital portal authentication, you have to create the portal server to provide the portal page to you, right? And why is you, when you log in, you can see the logo of your company, something like this. And then you have to create on the EG, I have to receive some account information and then send to the portal server or maybe some account server, then they can give me the reply, the, the account information is correct or not. So the EG router 
will be the media devices to exchange the packets between the server and the guest or maybe staff. Then on all the APIs, you also have to provide the configuration, how to recognize. Then we have to send out the captive portal page. Then the terminals can see the information. So if we want to meet all the technologies on the devices, then the user can get the IP address, can wait the internet, and also can do some limitation. You will find lots of network devices have to add the configuration, right? And one by one, and which part, and what's the function. But if you use the cloud app, now it's very easy for you. And later I will show you how to do the demo. Then let's see the first part, one by one, how to meet the network planning. The first one is a wild network. We will talk about the first part is a wild network. The second part is a wireless. And the third part, we will do some authentication. How to meet the wild network. About this part, the main technology, first one is VLAN, right? The second one is IP address. So first, let's say, what means VLAN? Why we use VLAN? And then how to create the VLAN? And when we use the VLAN, what's some typical maybe problem we can do the troubleshooting, something like this. So first, uh, why we need the VLAN, okay? Because in our network, and here the topology is only the example I show you to explain the function of the VLAN. If our network topology here, we only have layer two switch, all the devices send out the message and all the message we can divide into three type. One we call is unicast message, second one is multicast message, the third one is broadcast message. The special message is about the broadcast message. What mean broadcast message? If I send out, everyone can receive it, this one is broadcast message. So we hope that if some terminal, for example, like this topology, beyond to the techni technology and the finance, if the technology department send out some broadcast message, only the same department can receive it. The other department cannot. So that's why we want to limit the broadcast domain. And here, if you don't add any special application, what's the normal broadcast message pass? If the terminal send out broadcast message, when layer two switch receive it, I will do the flood. Flood means I will send out this message to all the interface except the receiving interface. So this message will be sent out to layer two switch and also the other terminals. There about the layer two switch receive this message, I will still do the flood to the next switch. Then the switch will flood again. So in this scenario, you will find the terminal send out the message, all the, all the other terminal will receive it. But finally, the function of the broadcast message may, may be only want to find this terminal. But you will find the, this message will pass through all the paths, right? Finally, this traffic will be discarded because this message, the purpose is I want to find the technology terminal. So this is the waste of our network. That's why we want to divide the whole network into smaller broadcast domain to make the range smaller is better. So we want this solution. And how to solve this problem? One solution, we can use the router. Because about router, also the same function like our EG, RAID-EG or maybe RAID-EG. If we use the router, when the router receives a broadcast message, I will stop. I don't will forward the broadcast message to another interface. So you also can use the router to divide your network to become different uh, isolation. Someone maybe say, I don't use VLAN, I use router to divide one department, one router, or maybe one department, one EG. This also can, uh, according to the technology, we also can make the broadcast domain smaller, right? 
if I send a message to layer two switch, layer two also will do the blood, but the router will stop here. But what's the disadvantage of the router? The first one, it's too expensive. If you only use a router to divide the network broadcast domain, it's too expensive. The second one, the, bro uh, the router interface number is very smaller. It's very less. So if you have 10 departments or maybe 50 departments, someone said, I buy 50 EGs. It's too expensive. Ex this one is too expensive. So router is not the typical solution to do the broadcast domain isolation. And the typical solution is we can use a VLAN because uh, typically lots of devices will support the VLAN technology. And the VLAN means virtual LAN and we can make a different department or maybe depends on your requirement. For example, I want to make a different flow into different VLAN or same department within different flows, they also can in the same VLAN. This is a logical technology. Like this topology in the, the terminal of the technology department is a blue one within the VLAN 10. And another one is a finance department be, between the VLAN 20. But all the terminals were located in different flow. It doesn't matter. So if you use the VLAN technology, it's very easy to do the management. And we don't have any limitation about the physical location. That's why we want to use a VLAN. If someone say, I only want to use one VLAN to make all the terminals together can work or not. Of, of course, about the connection is okay. If all the terminals are within the same VLAN, but in some special places or special times, all the terminals send out the broadcast message at the same time, you will find your bandwidth is not enough. So that's why in your network, you will divide the VLAN. And later, let's say why the terminals can know, oh, sorry, why the switch know this message belongs to VLAN 10 or maybe belong to VLAN 20. Then for the message only to the VLAN 10 range or to the VLAN 10 area. That's because if you divide the VLAN, we will make the packets different we will add a special target on the message to let the switch know. If I receive the message from the blue one, this interface, I will add the target of the 10. Then this message only can be sent out to the second interface. For example, I only will send out on this interface because this interface also belongs to VLAN 10. So this is a function of the target. If you deploy the VLAN in your devices, when I receive this message, I will add a different target. Then let's say, what's the meaning of the target? Maybe when you create a VLAN, you will say the range, you have to give a special VLAN value, right? VLAN 10, VLAN 20, VLAN 30, or VLAN 40, something like this. And I have a question for everyone, why you cannot create a VLAN 50, uh, maybe 5,000? Why you cannot VLAN, create VLAN 5000? Why when you do the configuration, there is a warning to you, you only can create the VLAN, the maximum value is 1494. That's because the target limitation. And if we receive the message and this message will do the encapsulation. Encapsulation means I will have the message to you. Maybe this message is a sentence. I will use the Zoom and the sentence, the information on the chat window. Our next training hope will be, for example, two hours later. This is a sentence. And the why you can receive this message? That's because your terminal will add a lot of information. Then as this terminal, maybe your PC will send out the message and then the switch receive it, I will help you to forward the correct destination one by one, hop by hop. So this process, why uh, when we add the network information, this process we call is encapsulation. When I receive the sentence from the Zoom app, then I will add. 
what's the destination IP address you have to visit? What's the destination MAC address we have to add? Then the switch will forward the message according to the MAC address information. The router, the EG receives this message, I will forward according to the IP address information. So this one is very important. And uh, about the switch, layer two switch for the message only according to the MAC address information. So we will add the destination MAC address, the source MAC address. Source MAC address is my terminal uh, MAC address. Destination IP address, MAC address is the next hope MAC address. So if we don't add the VLAN tag information, this one we call is standard Ethernet free. When the switch receives this message, I will add the VLAN information. And this VLAN will be added located here. Located here. And this is a tag. And what's the information on the tag? We have several parts. The first one is a TPID. The TPID value is fixed of 8100. That means the rest of the information is connected with the VLAN. So you have to forward it or maybe delete the tag or maybe add a new tag according to the VLAN operation. So this is the first part. We have to focus on the second part, the TCI, VLAN ID. This one is the most important for us, the VLAN ID, 12 bits. So about the 12 bits, the range is from 0 to 1495. This is the value. In the network, lot of ID will begin from the zero, not about the one. So the smallest value is zero. The maximum age is the value of two to the power of 12. So the value will be 1496, but we have to delete one. So the range is from zero to 1495, but the value zero and 1495 cannot be used. That's why when you create the VLAN, you only can create the VLAN value from 1 to 1494. So we will use this value to indicate a special VLAN. One VLAN, we will have, a one, we will have one ID. So this part is the most important part for us. The second part is priority. We have three bits and we can have eight different priority from zero to seven. And this part can be used for the QoS. So what means QoS? Quality of service, right? And uh, you can use, for example, the traffic of voice, the traffic of website. If the bandwidth is not enough, we hope we can force the voice as soon as possible. And uh, you have to let all the devices know the voice has higher priority. You can give different priority value here. And the next part is about the CFI. And this one is one bit. And this part you can skip. And when we do the configuration later, you will see the VLAN ID of 12 bits, right? And then the next part, when the switch receives this message from terminal, all the terminal cannot recognize the VLAN information. So I only send out the standard is net frame. Then when the switch receives it, I will add a special VLAN. Of course, why this interface will be add the VLAN 10, not about VLAN 20. That's because we add the configuration on the device. So that's why you have to do the configuration before we uh, transfer the message. And then this message sent out, I will delete the tag and to the terminal. And this message we call is the standard Ethernet free. Once the switch connect with the terminal, we receive a standard Ethernet. We will add the VLAN tag. And then I will delete the VLAN tag when we send out the message to the terminal. Also the same of the VLAN 20, okay? So this is the VLAN tag operation of the switch. And uh, if the switch only can deal with one VLAN, this interface type we call is access port. So maybe you already do some operation like the VLAN on the switch 
you will find the type like the access port or maybe the uh, trunk port or something like this. So this is the definition of the export access port. If you connect with the terminal, the terminal cannot recognize the VLAN information. You can make the interface to become access. About access, we only can deal with one VLAN. That means if this interface belongs to VLAN 10, when I receive the untag VLAN, untag Ethernet, I will add the VLAN 10. When I send out the message, I will delete the VLAN 10. So this is the purpose of the access. So if we receive the message from this terminal, I will add the VLAN 20. And this message cannot be sent out through this interface. And also cannot send out through this interface because these two interfaces belong to VLAN 10. But we can send out through this interface and delete the VLAN 10 20 because we have the same VLAN. So this is the purpose of the access port. But in our network, the typical one is not all the terminal will connect with one switch. We will pass through several switch. So in this scenario, if we only have access interface, it's not enough. For example, if the terminal within the same VLAN, they can directly communicate with each other, right? Also the VLAN 10 and the VLAN 20. Then when I send out the message, I will add the VLAN 10 of the switch. And if we make the interface 24, also belong to access in interface and uh, can allow the VLAN 10 pass through, then this message can send out to the next uh, switch and the next switch will delete the VLAN 10 to the terminal. But at the same time of the VLAN 20 want to do the communication, I will also send the message to the switch and the switch will add the VLAN 20 and later we will have the problem how to forward the message out to the other side to switch. Because you will find this interface, you already assign, uh, you already assign the VLAN to become 10. So this interface will not allow the VLAN 20 pass through. So in this scenario, how to let multiple VLAN pass through and to the correct destination? We have to use the other interface type. And this one we call is trunk. So about the trunk, you can allow multiple VLAN to pass through. And usually this trunk will be defined and will be used in the switch, not about the terminal. If we make the interface connect with terminal to become access port and the PVID, PVID is a default VLAN to become 10 and another to become 20, then the interface connect with switch, we will make the trunk interface and the PVID to become 20. In this scenario, one physical interface 24 can allow multiple, multiple VLAN to pass through. So this is the purpose why we want to use the trunk. And at the same time, let's see the process how to follow the message successfully. So first we will send out the VLAN 10, then the message was sent to the switch A. If switch A receives this message, I will add the VLAN 10. Then this message will be sent out through the 24, carries the VLAN 10 information, and then to the switch B. When switch B receives it, I also will delete the VLAN tag and to the terminal. At the same time, if the VLAN 20 sends the message to switch A, and I will add the VLAN of 20, and later I will send out also through the 24. But the different one is I will delete the VLAN 20. That's because the trunk PVID is 20. When we send the message out, if we find the VLAN information is same with our PVID, then I will delete the tag. And the one PVID only can be configured on one uh, trunk port. That's mean if you make the PVID of become 20, this interface cannot configure the other PVID here, but you can allow multiple VLAN pass through. So this is the trunk port. And then finally, the message also can be sent out. 
And the key point of our VLAN, you have to create the VLAN, right? By default, all the switch only exists as a VLAN one. Then you have to configure the interface type to become access. And also if the interface belongs to the switch, you have to create the interface to become trunk. So there are main steps when you create the VLAN in your network. And later when we show the demo we can do together and explain one by one, why the VLAN you have to create here and uh, what's a different result. So the key points are here, three steps. You have to know if you want to use VLAN, you have to create VLAN. The second one, you have to apply different interface type to become the correct type, access or maybe chunk. So this is the first part of the VLAN. It's very important because if you want to do the wild network or maybe wireless network, the basic part is a VLAN. So about this part, do you have any problem? If you know everything, okay, we will to go the next step. We call if you want to make the world network, the basic one is VLAN, right? And the second one is IP address. Because in our network, IP address is very important. All the terminal, all the network device, you must have an IP address. Then we can do the next step. So how to make all the devices to get an IP address? One, you can configure manually, step by step, one by one, uh, through the network administrator. But in the bigger network, it's not very good, right? Because maybe your configure is wrong. The result is the terminal cannot visit the internet. And uh, in the network, especially if you use a wireless network, we will choose a DHCP dynamic host configuration protocol to assign the IP address 